So I was very struck by something you said in the middle there, which was that shared services that are provided, which people then use, are much more popular and, easily, and, and are more frequently taken up than ones that institutions create mm. themselves. Yeah. So is VAT really the problem, or is it actually it, it, institutions? It's not actually. We are asking institutions to do something which they are not structured to do. It's actually to sort of create a new business form when they're actually trying to run the business of higher education, educating students, doing some research, and, and, and all of the other activities. Um, and, and they have no expertise particularly in mm. doing that. And, and therefore, actually, I think we're asking too much. And, and therefore, rightly, I think, institutions, and you as governors of institutions, mm take a step back from that and say, actually, should we be getting involved in this and, and, and really, is this our business? Because we've just gone through a, an outsourcing, not a shared mm. servicing, but in some ways, I suppose, there are similarities. And actually, you know, what's had, had to happen is we've had to develop different governance. I, as chair, have had to Absolutely. get that going. And then the staff themselves have had to develop considerable expertise and being good clients, good customers, etc., etc. And actually, you know, the combination of the governance and them actually has been a big kind of learning thing for everybody. Yeah, but, you know, it's been a huge learning yes. thing, is yes, my point, right. you know, whether yeah. it works or not. And, and, and that isn't recognised sufficiently, I think. The, right. the, uh, the burden that's put on the institutions who want to take this forward. For those following on, when that, all of that's been sorted out, life's fairly simple. And let me just ask you, do you what do you think the possibilities are of people com collaborating with people whom they're now increasingly been asked to compete with? You'll find that a lot of the uh, best shared services in, in the business sector are within multidivisional corporations. So where, for example, an organization may have had operations in many different countries, each of which may have had its own HR or finance function, sure. it then makes perfect sense to locate those into one shared unit, but within the organization. Now, that may be located within the UK, or indeed it may be offshore. But, uh, and so if you look at American universities, you have the New York State University, which has many, many campuses. And it makes sense for them to have a shared mm. service, mm. which is perhaps the, the back office admin structure, student services. But a lot of UK universities don't have that plethora of campuses that some of the vast foreign universities have. And what about, what about collaborating with other, peop other institutions that are nearby or, or whatever? Th there are one or two examples of that already. Uh, and I can think of an example on the South Coast where, where two HEIs are collaborating on student services and the back office functions, grade processing, mm. accommodation. But it's, the model of, of, of business organisations having shared services is, is something that very often happens within the organisation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to go, well, to go beyond that and have two competing organisations collaborate is really a, not such a common model in, in, in the wider world. Well, Chris, Chris I suppose you, you're, the success of your model, presumably, will reflect what, what, what Andrew's just said, which is that actually you're a big federation, aren't you, so that collaboration is, more, is yes. easier? Well, uh, you may think that, no. Uh, <laughs> um, we are a federation, but that federation are, are all completely independent and they can okay. uh, choose which services they, they, they take from the central university and they can choose not to. But are you, is your, sorry to interrupt, but is your model like Steve's and has, you create the joint service and they then either use it or don't, or have you yeah. got them generally, actually collaborating? Generally, yeah. of, because of that's the legacy um, that we're working with, generally that is the case. But yeah. there are new um, shared services which are far more collaborative. Uh, for example, we're developing a shared service with, with um, SOAS and uh, with Birkbeck. Uh, for a joint library management mm -hmm. system, mm -hmm. and there's far more mm -hmm. a joint collaboration rather than a, a, a supplier-customer relationship. And you've been doing this for a while, so how did you deal with the VAT in 1537 or whatever <laughs> it was you, you first started <laughs> doing this? I don't think it existed then. In fact, <laughs> uh, and in fact, there are still some areas which are uh, between the Federation that are, are, are VAT exempt. But um, more and more, um, that is becoming an issue. But how did you do it before 2012 when the guidance on the HMRC... Oh, well, which, uh, we, we, there are things, as I say, there are things that we don't charge VAT on because we, we manage it through different types of employment, but there are other things that we do. And, and you just don't and, come and, back. And the key thing is uh, that actually when we're working beyond the federal boundaries now. And, uh, for example, we've got about 150 customers um, mm. using our, our Moodle environment. Um, they have to be charged VAT, mm. and so we're now looking at how we can re restructure ourselves in order to avoid that. And Tim, we've talked, these are all back service, back office things that are collaborating. In a sense, Disc and Janet, though, their focus, whilst there's a huge amount of obviously back office stuff, but the focus is actually on research, isn't it, and learning and academia and teaching. 
Well, all of those, yeah. That's, that's about the whole lot, isn't it? But, but, <laughs> but my, my point really is that, you know, what one tends to think about, of, of, of the notion of shared services as being, you know, some kind of technological yeah, yeah, whiz kid yeah. in the background who yeah. does blah, and then everybody else carries on as they are. But, I mean, what I suppose I want to find out is whether or not in producing something everybody uses, does that produce interesting collaborations around Absolutely. the front line? Absolutely. I mean, if, if you take something... Uh, that's very topical now, Janet Six, which comes online. Topical with whom? I love this. Yes. It's, a, it's well, a great world we live in. Well, yes. well, it's topical because if it doesn't happen, you'll have the Daily Mail on my case and everyone. Uh, it's a very successful publicly funded IT project. Fantastic. On, on schedule, on time, on budget, um, even within budget possibly. Uh, and it, it, it gives to this country, to, to the United Kingdom, a world-class network that is even beyond our American colleagues. And they are envious of us partly because of the governance we have of it. And that governance has to do with the shared service aspect of it. No university, or even, dare I say, a group of universities, could produce something like the Janet Network on their own. It has to be done collaboratively as a yeah. shared service right across the nation. And what that then gives us is the opportunity to, uh, for universities to do what they're good at, to be innovative with this underpinning oxygen of energy and knowledge exchange that goes on without them having to think about it too much, because it's there. Good so, example of the entrepreneurial state. Well, mm. I, well, and that's why, I mean, it's interesting with the government and its e-infrastructure policy, and this is where you get into another area that exercises, Steve, of state aid. But, for example, um, the government is very keen of the interaction between universities, research and industry, and clearly we want to extend the opportunity of the shared service to them as well. So we've got to make sure that we can do that within the law, but at the same time, make sure that there is the opportunity there. So if you take uh, Loughborough, for example, and their interests in the, in the, what was the International Broadcast Centre at Olympic Park, we want to make sure that we can provide them a great rich service there, that also they can collaborate with their industrial partners as well, without getting too worried about, well, you can't do that or you can do that. How can you have an entrepreneurial economy if all the time people are looking over their shoulder and saying, I'm not sure if we can do that? Mm -hmm.